next at four. And we are starting with new developments on the deadly Texas church shooting. Investigators now say the gunman sent threatening text messages to his mother-in-law that morning who attends the church. The shooter, Devin Kelly, had a history of domestic violence and was kicked out of the Air Force. Right now, the death toll stands at 26, but 10 people are in critical condition. The shooting has rocked the town of Sutherland Springs. That's a city of only 4,000 people. And we now start with Meg Oliver. She's live in Texas. The Sheriff's Department says once the gunmen charged in and opened fire inside the First Baptist Church behind me, there was no way that people could escape. FBI agents use metal detectors to comb through the murder scene outside the First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs, Texas. Authorities say 26 year old Devin Kelly opened fire during services Sunday, killing more than two dozen people. There was a domestic situation going on within this family. Um, the suspect's mother in law attended this church. Uh, we know that he had made threaten, threatening, uh, uh, she had reset threatening texts from him. The victims range in age from 18 months to 77 years old. One of the victims was 14 year old Annabelle Pomeroy, the daughter of the church's pastor, Frank Pomeroy. He and his wife were out of town when the massacre happened. And one thing that gives me a sliver of encouragement is the fact that Belle was surrounded yesterday by her church family that she loved fiercely. Authorities say as Kelly left the church, a good Samaritan who lives across the street exchanged gunfire, wounding Kelly before he drove off. The good Samaritan then jumped in a truck driven by Johnny Langendorf and they gave chase. And said he just shot at the church and said we have to get him. I said let's go and that's what we did. Investigators say during the chase, Kelly called his father saying he had been shot and didn't think he was going to make it. When police caught up with him, he was dead. Investigators believe from a self inflicted gunshot wound. Kelly served in the Air Force but was court martialed in 2012 on charges he assaulted his wife and child. He received a bad conduct discharge. Investigators recovered three weapons, the assault rifle at the scene, and two handguns from the suspect's vehicle. The suspect's vehicle. CBS News has learned there were multiple instances of Kelly assaulting his first wife and stepson. He even fractured his stepson's skull. Kelly pleaded guilty and was sentenced to a year confinement, but it carries a maximum of five years. And since it was a domestic violence charge, those two things together should have barred him from purchasing a firearm. Live in Sutherland Springs, Texas, I'm Meg Oliver. Now back to you. Meg, thank you. Now, as I said before, there's only 4,000 people in this small town, and now 4% of that town is dead after the shooting. We are slowly learning the names of the victims, including this woman, Joanne Ward. She and her seven-year-old daughter were killed. A pregnant mother of five also died, and one family says they lost eight in the shooting. We're, we're a small, as we call it, a small little redneck town in the country. Why this church? Why people that I grew up with? Heavy, hurting for the victims, for the families. There's just no words to describe. The oldest victim was 77 years old. The youngest was an 18-month-old baby. President Trump is calling the Texas shooting a mental health issue, not a gun issue. He made the comments while on his Asian trip. While some lawmakers are calling for action after another mass shooting, others say now is not the time to politicize the attack. KBOI 2 Scott Logan has been reaching out to our congressional delegation for reaction to the latest mass shooting all afternoon. He joins us now live right here in the studio. Well, I contacted U.S. Senator Mike Crapo's office and Crapo released a statement saying he joins with all Idahoans in lifting up the lives forever changed by this attack. The senator also said the church shootings and the recent vehicle terrorism attack in New York City are more grim reminders that the mental health of attackers is a factor that cannot be overlooked and should be part of any new federal legislation or funding proposal to stop violence. I also contacted the offices of Senator Jim Risch and Representatives Mike Simpson and Raul Labrador for reaction. They haven't gotten back to me yet. I was told that Senator Risch was traveling today. Live in the studio, Scott Logan, KBOI 2 News. Now to our national question of the day. Is enough being done by lawmakers to reduce mass shootings? To vote, head to our website, IdahoNews.com. Now, our producer here is going to show you how to do it. 